Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about a feature of AWS Certificate Manager, or ACM. ACM is a managed service that lets you provision, manage, and deploy public and private TLS certificates that you can use to securely encrypt network traffic. Now you can request and use Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, or ECDSA, TLS certificates from ACM. Prior to the release of this feature, you could only request certificates with an RSA 2048 key algorithm from ACM. ECDSA certificates could be imported to ACM, but imported certificates cannot utilize managed renewal. You can now use ACM to request an ECDSA certificate and associate the certificate with AWS services like Application Load Balancer, or ALB, or Amazon CloudFront. As a result, you get the benefit of managed renewal, where ACM can automatically renew ECDSA certificates before they expire. Public certificates requested from ACM are free. You only pay for the resources you create to run your application. When you request a certificate using ACM, you can now choose to issue an ECDSA certificate instead of RSA. You can request both ECDSA P256 and P384 certificates from ACM. If you do not request an ECDSA certificate, ACM will issue an RSA 2048 certificate by default. In this video, we will briefly examine the difference between RSA and ECDSA certificates, discuss some important considerations when deciding which certificate type to use, and provide a simple demo showing how you can request an ECDSA certificate. Let's get started by talking a little bit about TLS certificates and how ECDSA differs from RSA. TLS certificates are used to secure network communications and establish the identity of websites over the internet as well as resources on private networks. RSA and ECDSA are two widely used public key cryptographic algorithms, algorithms that use two different keys to encrypt and decrypt data. In the case of TLS, a public key is used to encrypt data, and a private key is used to decrypt data. Public key or asymmetric key algorithms are not as computationally efficient as symmetric key algorithms like AES. For this reason, public key algorithms like RSA are primarily used to exchange secrets between two parties initiating a TLS connection. These secrets are then used by both parties to decipher the same symmetric key that actually encrypts the data in transit. Let's briefly compare the security and performance of these two public key algorithms. In cryptography, security is measured as the computational work to exhaust all possible values of a symmetric key in an ideal cipher. An ideal cipher is a theoretical algorithm that has no weaknesses, so you must try every possible key to discover which is the correct key. This is similar to the idea of brute forcing a password, trying every possible character combination to find the correct password. Let's imagine you have a 112-bit key ideal cipher, which means it would take 2 to the 112th power tries to exhaust the key space, and we say it has a 112-bit security level. However, it is important to realize that security strength and key length are not always equal, meaning an encryption key with a length of 112 bits will not always have a 112-bit security level. ECDSA provides higher security strength for lower computational cost. ECDSA P256, for example, provides 128-bit security strength and is equivalent to an RSA 3072 key. Meanwhile, ECDSA P384 provides 192-bit security strength, equivalent to the key associated with an RSA 7680 certificate. In other words, an ECDSA P384 key would require 2 to the 192nd power tries to exhaust the key space. Take a look at this table for an in-depth comparison of the different security strengths for RSA key lengths and ECDSA curve types. Note that only RSA 2048 and ECDSA P256 and P384 are currently issued by ACM. However, ACM does support the import and usage of other certificate types listed in the table. ECDSA provides a higher security strength for a given key length than RSA, but does not add performance overhead. For example, ECDSA P256 is as performant as RSA 2048 while providing security strength that is comparable to RSA 3072. ECDSA certificates also have up to a 50% smaller certificate size when compared to RSA certificates, and are therefore more suitable to protect data in transit over low bandwidth or for applications with limited memory and storage, such as IoT devices. You should immediately see the size difference between the two certificates on this slide. Modern browsers and operating systems are now ECDSA compatible. That said, some custom applications may not be ECDSA compatible. 
There's a link in the description of this video to an AWS blog post that includes a way to test if your application is compatible with ECDSA certificates. When you terminate your TLS traffic with ALB, you can work around compatibility concerns by binding both ECDSA and RSA certificates for a given domain. You can configure ALB to prioritize and present the ECDSA certificate when the calling application is ECDSA compatible, and to utilize the RSA certificate if the calling application is not ECDSA compatible. At this point you may be thinking, when should I use ECDSA certificates? When should I use RSA? In general, you should consider using ECDSA certificates wherever possible, as they provide stronger security compared to RSA without impacting performance. You can also choose to use ECDSA certificates to help meet compliance guidelines where more than 120-bit TLS security is required, as RSA 2048 certificates have a 112-bit security strength. ECDSA certificates are strongly recommended for applications that need to securely send data over low bandwidth connections, or when using IoT devices that may not have much memory or computational power to store and process the larger certificate sizes that RSA offers. Lastly, let's examine how you can request and use ECDSA certificates using the AWS console. Keep in mind that while we'll be using the AWS console for the demo, ECDSA certificates can also be requested through the AWS CLI and APIs. When requesting certificates using the API or CLI, you can use the Request Certificate API with either EC Prime 256v1 or EC SECP 384R1 as the key algorithm parameter to request a P256 or P384 ECDSA certificate, respectively. Okay, now that we're in the AWS console, let's navigate to the ACM console. Now we'll choose Request a Certificate. In this video, we'll be requesting a public certificate, so we'll select Request a Public Certificate and choose Next. I'll enter a example domain name in the Fully Qualified Domain Name field. Next, I'll select DNS Validation. DNS validation is recommended wherever possible, as it enables automatic renewal of ACM-issued certificates with no action required by the domain owner. If you use Amazon Route 53, you can use ACM to directly update your DNS records. DNS validated certificates will be renewed by ACM as long as the certificate is in use and the DNS record is in place. In the Key Algorithm section, select your preferred algorithm based on your security requirements. For this example, we'll choose ECDSA P256. Now we'll choose Request to request the public certificate. The certificate will now be in the pending validation state until the domain can be validated either through DNS or email validation, depending on the selection in the previous steps. And that's it! In this video we discussed the basic differences between RSA and ECDSA certificates, when you might choose ECDSA or RSA, and how you can use AWS Certificate Manager to request public or private ECDSA certificates. Thanks for your time, and please consult the AWS Certificate Manager documentation for more information on ECDSA certificates.